They're scattered around the country, but mere geography won't keep our MP trio apart when the politics of disagreement calls. From Halifax, NDP Deputy Leader Megan Leslie. From Montreal, where the liberal lovin' is about to start, Liberal MP Roger Kuzner. And from Edmonton, Conservative Finance Chair James Rajat. All right, there's a new poll out. One of you is going to like it, two of you probably won't. It's a decimal poll done for CBTV that shows the budget was a government dud and a liberal bump. Liberals are up 4% to 37% voter support, and the Conservatives flatlined at 29, the NDP third down to 24. All right, Megan, it's just one snapshot, but the Liberal surge seems to be fairly consistent. How does the NDP stop all this, particularly with the love-in about to begin in Montreal? Yeah, well, it is just a snapshot, like you said, and, and we, we know the adage to be very true that the only poll that counts is the poll on election day, but of course, you know, we see this and uh, it tells us a lot about the budget, for example, that it didn't resonate with people, and it tells us that there's a bit of a celebrity uh, <laughs> leader for the Liberals right now, so what do we do? We try the best we can. You know, I think Tom Mulcair has demonstrated his ability in the House, hands down, doing the best job, and so, but that's not enough. We need to figure out how do we communicate to people? How do we get our message out, get out across the country, whether it's through uh, traditional media, through our own uh, forms of communication, or through social media? So, so we're going to keep working on it. I'm going to stick with you, though, Megan, on this, because I wonder if this is a bit disheartening for you in the fact that your leader has done very well in the House of Commons, getting praise all over the place. Mm -hmm. You did your cross-country yeah. tour to try and uh, raise the consumer awareness agenda. What's going wrong? Yeah. Why aren't you going up? Well, I do think that there is a little bit of delay in polls, but uh, but you're right. You know, we we have been working really hard on a lot of issues, and Tom has been doing a great job. So, you know, you do see these polls, and and you think, well, geez, how are we not getting that message across to Canadians? Sometimes it just takes time, right? Yeah. Uh, we do have a have a barrier where we need to make sure that people know who Tom Mulcair is, know who he is, his story, his why he's fighting for Canadians, and and so we're still working on getting that message across. All right, before Roger Glow. I want to get James's thoughts on this. I mean, you guys are putting Justin Trudeau in your sights for the election and the ramp up to it. Uh, how do you take him down a notch or two? Well, getting your question about the budget, Don, I just can't believe that Canadians don't find the budget as exciting <laughs> as I do. I read through the document. It was thrilling. I encourage everyone to read up. But I mean, you know, seriously, uh, obviously, I, you know, Canadians across country don't gyrate their spinal cords over a budget document or a thrown speech. But it is a very important document, and I think if you look at certain areas of the budget, the investments in research and development, folks at the U of A here at Edmonton are thrilled about those investments that we're making through the Canada Research Excellence Fund. In terms of addressing the infrastructure challenge, I addressed uh, my city council in Leduc on Monday night. They're thrilled, frankly, about the renewal of the Bill in Canada Fund. But in general, I think what Canadians look for is stable fiscal management, and the fact we're going to be in surplus budget next year I think a lot. your average Canadian says that's very good. They're staying on course. They're on track. And like Megan said, I mean, this poll is a snapshot. But I think at the next election, people are going to make a decision in terms of which party and which leader they believe will best lead us forward based on their track record. And I think we have a very good track record to put forward at the next election. All right, Roger. Before you glow, I wonder how you keep this and whether you've peaked too soon. Well, I, I, I don't disagree with, with Megan. This is a snapshot, and we understand that fully. Uh, uh, our leader, Justin Trudeau, has been working extremely hard. He, he's obviously been, being uh, uh, he's connected with Canadians, and, and that's all positive. But again, uh, we, we, we know that uh, uh, you know, polls this far out don't really make a, a, a hill of beans. Uh, as we go toward our convention this weekend, we're looking for some... Uh, uh, exciting stuff to come from the from the convention. There are some real interesting uh, resolutions on the floor, uh, but you know when you sort of wrap it around the budget stuff, <laughs> a buddy of mine came up to me the other day, a little conversation. I said, "How are you getting along?" And uh, I said, "You must be getting close to retirement." He said, "I'm still working toward freedom 55." He said, uh, "I think I'll be able to retire when my youngest son turns 55." <laughs> and, and that's sort of what's going on in the real Canada. And this budget missed the whole train on, uh, you know, they, they said it was a boring budget. They sort of frame it as a boring budget. But, uh, Don, you know, you know, kids get bored when there's nothing to do. And this was a do-nothing budget. Things were back-ended. There were some post-dated checks for infrastructure. 
that kind of stuff. Wow. And, uh, and there are some Canadians out there that are finding it difficult and uh, really, you know, it, it missed the mark on, uh, on trying to do anything to, uh, to uh, help those Canadians. I, I, I give you a chance to gloat and you just turn it around and refuse to, Roger. I just can't believe it. All right, I want to bring <laughs> yeah. in another finding from this budget. Not James, a gloat in kind. Yeah, James, you touched on this. The budget got a, basically a shrug from 70% of Canadians. 76 said doesn't impact them one bit, positively or negatively. Was that kind of the intention, James? You just wanted to do nothing, say nothing, have no impact budget? No, this was, as Minister Flaherty said, this was a stay the course budget. This was on the fiscal track that we've been on since uh, 2009. At that time, Minister Flaherty said we'd balance the budget in 2015-2016. Uh, so we're on the track, in, in fact, for a $6 billion surplus in the next fiscal year. But if you look at some of the investments, I mean, the way Roger describes it, frankly, this is a $53 billion 10-year infrastructure plan going forward that municipalities in my area are very pleased about. If you look at the investments in research and development, as I said, the universities and colleges across this country warmly welcome the initiatives and the investments in this year's budget. At the same time, we've been maintaining strong transfers for health care education, for seniors' benefits, for family benefits to the provinces and to persons across the country. So it is a stay the course budget, um, which is exactly what the minister was uh, projecting going forward. But it does have some key investments, I think, that we should highlight. Megan, I want to get to you quickly on the budget because mm -hmm. you said there's a lot of things wrong with this budget, yet the public doesn't seem to care share your anxiety. Yeah. Yeah, I, I listened to James, and I think um, I think it's, he's mischaracterizing. The way I see this budget is it's, it is a, a do-nothing budget, but it's actually do-nothing on the back of tomorrow. So, so being able to say, well, we're going to have to cut here and here and here, so then we can have some goodies right before the 2015 election, right? It's all about saving it up for that 2015 budget. And I can see the, the bigger plan here, how, how they're going to accomplish a lot of this. I can't remember if I brought it up last time on our our last panel but on the environment file we saw money for Parks Canada there's a backlog of maintenance that needs to be done around the tune of 400 million which sounds fantastic but when you actually look at how that money is broken down next year they will spend one million dollars of that money and all the rest will be spent after 2015. So, so that's that's not truthful, and and that's a little glimpse into what I think we're going to see next spring. It's going to be full of little goodies that they can wave around during the election, and full of these false promises. Okay, quick last round, uh, all three on another topic. Andrew Leslie got uh, taken out uh, or given a bit of a shellacking by the Conservatives over a seventy-two thousand dollar moving expense. I want to quickly get your thoughts. Is this? too dirty? Is this going one step beyond what's acceptable in politics? Were you wincing when you heard it? Start with you, Megan Leslie. Was I wincing when I heard it? Uh, I was wincing, but maybe for a different reason than you're asking. Uh, this is somebody who is involved in politics and may potentially run, and so I feel bad when politicians are, are implicated in these stories because I, I'm worried it looks bad on all of us. Uh, I think that this isn't... Um, it's really unfortunate that this happened, but, but it did. And just because you can check the tick boxes off to say, yeah, I meet the requirements, you have to ask the question at the end, well, is this the right thing to do? Okay, Roger. I don't know that this was the right quick, thing to quick do. Quick thought from you on that. I, I was really disappointed with uh, Rob Nicholson's approach on this. Uh, you, you know, this is, you know, the, anybody in the uh, military that's been there over 20 years, they, they're, they're allowed to take this one last move. I know the Conservatives have uh, five members in their caucus that uh, are in that similar situation. It'd be interesting to see how many use that, uh, that uh, program. But uh, I, I was disappointed in Rob's uh, approach on this. It was, you know, just raw. Uh, politics and uh, and that's uh, truly unfortunate and I agree with Megan I think uh, you, you know this sort of discourages people from getting involved in politics good people from getting involved in politics if this is what it's all about I mean you know he's he moved 18 times during his career he was so far he, he doesn't do any of the math on this kind of stuff or any engagement he doesn't book the movers it's a, a function of okay. the office and uh, so Last he's pretty word much to James. From this. James over to you quickly we're out of time let's hear a quick thought from you on that well, I would certainly recognize Andrew Leslie's service to the country, and, and I, would, I would certainly acknowledge that, and I would, I would congratulate him for that. But I think, you know, talking to folks here in, in my area, I mean, they look at that and they say to move within one city and charge $72,000 of expenses is, frankly, it's just not appropriate. And, and frankly, when you enter the public arena, you put, you, put, you, put yourself, you put yourself forward for public office. We all know it as the three people on the panel here. 
the fact is you become an open book. We, all of our expenses now are online as That's individual true. members of Parliament. And frankly, all right. so we do have to be ready for that higher level of scrutiny when we do enter the public arena there. And I think, frankly, that whole policy needs to be looked at when people are moving within one city and charging that amount of expense. I think your average citizen, as he said to me yesterday at the Rotary Club, is that's just inappropriate. That okay. deserves to be changed. That's it. We're out of time. Thank you all three. Appreciate you coming on the show from your various places in the country. Thank you. Great, Don. Thanks, Don.